Hi, Sportster Paul. We're here with Visual Mill from Mechsoft, Visual Cam, Visual CAD. Uh, this is going to be a 3D where we try to make this motorcycle part of mine. I've uh, adjusted the part so it's got big draft angles on the side so we can watch 3D tool pass get generated. Uh, the biggest problem so far with Visual Mill is stability. Even it was horribly unstable on my Windows 7 box with dual graphics system in this HP ZBook 15 laptop, right? Because it's half Intel, half NVIDIA Quadro. Once I figured out, most of it got cured when I figured out how to turn off extended hybrid graphics, which throws the splash screen, the boot screen up on other monitors in case you don't have the VGA connected. But I've got a four, four screen setup, right? I don't need to have extended anything. That made it better. And then I learned you can just unenable hybrid graphics completely. And then everything runs off the NVIDIA card. And the NVIDIA card will support all four of my monitors, three 1920 by 1200s, and then one 43 inch TV, you know, 10, 1080 TV up above. So I, it got way better. All the dialog boxes changing. That kind of problem went away. But what just happened to me as I tried to show you this part the first time, it the SolidWorks resource monitor starts popping up towards the end of, of the show. And then, you know, you click on something and poof. And you can just tell everything, the response times for dialogues and stuff get real slow. So there's some memory leak still that for my particular laptop with its particular, you know, I did upgrade to Windows 10 because that makes SolidWorks happy. And Visual Mill told me that, you know, they're great support. I, I love the company. So they told me, you know, try that. There's also tips they told me about, well, turn off certain acceleration, hardware, this, that. I'm not going to get into that, right? If it, It's the only program that's having these systemic stability problems. So we're starting over from scratch. And rather than just go over the finished part like I was doing before it crashed, I'm going to start from scratch. And this might be an hour long show, but bear with me. All right, so let's go up to SolidWorks here. And here we are. This is, what is it? Uh, oil Reservoir Visual Mill. That's what we're going to do. Now, I got to tell you, the worst thing about this demo program is it won't let you save. Bobcad, Mastercam, the others, you can save, but then it only opens in another demo program. So this crashing might not be as serious, right? If I could save it, close it, reopen it, and it doesn't crash for another half hour, I could almost live with that. I wouldn't like to, but... Here we are. So this is a oil reservoir. It's going to go on the side of a sports to redesign I'm doing. It was straight straight on the sides, but I put this, I think, 10 or 11 degree draft angle here to give some exercise to these 3D cam programs. And then here's the inside, which I left the sidewalls here straight. So let's see if I can remember. I've been practicing, you know, all afternoon. So let's see how I can remember. So, oh, here's the first tip. If you... Let's see, does this show? Yeah, this shows the, this is the tab for visual cam, right? But when you open it up enough, bing, now you get a lot more stuff that's hidden, you know, buried in submenus, just shows up here. So it's a lot nicer to work with this. The other tip top secret, not apparent, this is a button that turns on a whole nother thing. It turns it on way up high, so you, you panic, but then you realize, oh, okay, there's the window that we were just looking at, and then it added this window. And this is when they talk about tools and regions and feature recognition and knowledge bases. That's here. We don't need to see that, right? So first thing, machine three axis, double click on it. Because I got a four monitor set up, right, it's opening off. So that's the only reason you're going to see me dragging this. All we want to do is make this in. This is a bug. They leave the existing one up, so it's hard to tell what you're doing when you change it. But I, I'm going to put it in the machine like this. Solid jaw back here, fixed jaw up here, positive X to the right, positive Y to the back. So I know I want a red arrow pointing here. It's a little hard to see. Z's are correct, right? Both little Z arrows here, the little arrowhead and the big one. So we're going to rotate about Z once. Did that do it? Twice. See, it's so because they don't suppress the original one. Let's just say, oh, OK, I should show you also. There's stuff about your machine here, you know, maximum feed rates, stuff like that. Not 
not the end of the world. But this is what I love about, did I get it? Yeah, yeah, okay. The little arrows are the important ones. Uh, positive x to the right there. Now, this is what I love. I, uh, the post, you can double click on it. Mach 4 is what my avid benchtop pro router style machines aluminum all day. Some people are trying to machine steel on it. Uh, it's a Mach 4. Mach 3 is one of their canned posts. I just picked that. I'm sure it would work. Stock. Okay, so now we want to click the stock. Double clicking, I don't think works. You got to, oh no, it did. Hey, how about that? Double click brings up box stock. If you don't, you right click and you can make a thing of the part, a cylinder, you know, different kinds stock from, from a selection. You can extrude something, but box stock is what you want. I got to pull this on so you see it. And see what it's done is it's made a stock the exact size of the part, but we don't want that because that's not how you order or cut stock. We want, here's another bug you're going to see, 8.5. Now, when I click here, it should change, but it won't, right? Click, change focus. Oh, so that's a bug. 8.5. When I click here, it should change the stock size to 8.5. It won't. That's a bug. But now I want an inch and a half thick. That's a common plate size. Now it's going to change the outer dimensions as well. One, two, right? So it added the stock above. So now, see, it has this align function. That would be so great because if you use align, bam, it'll center everything. And then you can adjust from there. Unfortunately, when you go back to this dialog to adjust, it goes back to the stock showing, right? It, it forgets what you did in the align command. Another bug. Okay, not the end of the world. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to lower this, and we learned from our Bobcad 3D. We want this stock about 50 thousands here with more meat down here so we can run a ball mill all the way down so the outside corner of that ball mill is right here. Okay, so what are we going to do here, there? So that looks nominal. Let's, okay, if we go up, oh gosh. <laughs> Double click. A new way to confuse me. All right. Okay. Let's look at that. Oh, it was in a pick point mode or something. Copy, model, bond. See, we get to do it over again. And I'm sorry. I tell you, visual or solid. Solid cam was the clumsiest as far as doing this setup stuff, but at least you kind of knew where you were. One, okay, then go here. Okay, and then, okay, when we go up, so we want it smaller. So we want 1.5, 50 thousandths. Uh, see, but then it won't take. You got to go like this, and that's what we want. More meat down here. Sorry to be so tedious. Ignore wireframe, that mattered once, okay? And then we got the next problem of not being able to center the stock, which could be real serious, right? If you're counting on the stock, flipping stuff upside down and it being symmetrical, this could be a terrible problem for you. So what are we doing? We are, come on, here. We're trying to move this one. Oh, we did it right. And let's guess around there. And let's guess around there. Or no, let's go back one, one more. There. And it will break out. The tools are going to break out here, here, and I think right here. But that's not the end of the world. So we've got our stock. Now, th this is the thing I love about this program. It speaks machinist language because I drink beer with machinists. So I know work zero is a thing. So there's no fixtures. We did a show about fixtures. Set up one. Say, well, I need to work zero. Say work zero. And unlike most all of the programs, you say set to stock box. And it, because it happened to default to highest Z in Northwest, which is where all my machinist buddies put, you know, fixed jaw. Part zero should be off the fixed jaw device, not the movable one. So there it is. And it led, because you can set it to the stock, there, there it is. And it inherited the orientation from the machine and the stock or wherever. So that's right. Generate. Done. Isn't that great? Meanwhile, you can click here and say we're doing the outer setup. There. So now go back here and we want a two axis. We want a profile. Comes up with our favorite little thing. And we want to select geometry. Now you don't select it now. You got to tell it you're selecting it. Classic software, right? But they, but they, because they devolve back to SolidWorks selection methods or selection system, 
you can, excuse me, you can highlight this, say select tangency, it's done the entire perimeter. This may all be wrong, right? I might be doing this wrong for a real machinist, but tool, I finally understand this tool thing a little better. Because this tool tab is just part of it, I could select any of these tools and then just click to the next tab and it's going to have that tool. All right, I understand a little better. You do need a microscopic eyeball to see that these little icons, minuscule five pixel icons, have rounded bottoms and those are ball mills. Uh, so you go up here, you find a two flute end mill that's an inch long. Select it. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it does select. So it's selecting. Two flute, 1.18. Okay. And then, see, it's done. See, I was trying to go edit, select. Now, I do think, oh, look, see, number of flutes. It says two flute here, has four flutes there. Well, I guess we'll have to edit this, won't we? Number of flutes. That's probably because I changed this, right? I got in and screwed it up. And let's make the flute lengths longer, 1.5, because we will get burned here. I think save edits the tool. Once again, I'm just like, well, what am I changing where? I don't know. Two flute. Huh, look, it's got the right thing here. Diameter, 375. Carbide, which Bobcat wouldn't, only high-speed steel. I couldn't figure it out. We're not going to worry about this, 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 cut parameters. Okay, this is what I hate. This cut parameters. On some dialogues, it's over here in this corner. Th these hop around depending on the particular operation. Incredibly confusing. So, tolerance, I add an extra tenth to the tolerance, no good reason. I always want a climb mill. Cutting side. Uh, when I said left, it put it on the wrong. I, this is always going to do it wrong. And unlike Bobcat or, or solid cam there's no way to say what direction are you going step over control we don't want any step over but we do want step down that you can see i'm getting confused cut levels so location is at the bottom the depth of cut see now select the start point let's go up here come on good enough select end point go down here good enough it wants to do all 1.3 inches at once. Don't let it do that. Let's go, you know, quarter of an inch down, which is a little aggressive. I wouldn't really do that. I think it's smart enough to know where it's at now. Edit entry. This is something, you know, and I'm practicing all day is how I figured this out. You don't want to make little curly cues into this perimeter because, you know, you'd be in the middle of the stock and why do that? You want to just come straight down because all you're trying to do is cut the outside perimeter of this. So no entry exit here. No entry exit or I guess one's entry, one's exit, whatever. Let's just try to generate and see. And this is the other user interface thing that exasperates me compared to solid cam when you, or Bobcad. You do a generate and it poofs this dialog. And there's always 75 other things you need to change to get the tool path you want. But see, the experts who write the user interface, they know what they want to select. Okay, I think it did it, right? The red is the entry exit. If you want, and this is, okay, double click. This is perimeter click uh, this is the reason to love visual mill the simulator it's fairly slow let's speed it up a little and here we go it's going down going down uh what okay this compare button would you only get in the 2500 expert a package and above i've got this in professional mode five thousand dollars premium mode five axis simultaneous all this other stuff that's ten thousand dollars but you do compare i did something wrong oh no 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 because you know the the sidewalls it's it, it should be close down here right at this corner so compare doesn't teach us much here but but it's something to love okay what else did i want to show okay i guess we're okay let's get out of the simulator let's go here and Okay, I, I had a problem in that the toolpaths weren't go in the first episode when I re was recording. The toolpath didn't go down to the bottom edge here. Okay, well, now it's happy. Never the same twice. This is the way it's in the vise, right? Part zero in the back here. You don't have to look at the stock. Stock visibility here. You can poof it off if you don't want to see it. Same with toolpath visibility globally here. But once you, once you don't light the toolpath up, you don't see it. And unlike... 
SolidWorks Cam by CamWorks hovering over it doesn't pop up all these and get you confused. So I like that too. We got the perimeter cut. Now what? We want to cut the top. And because I'm going to do this thing that might be wrong about using this part zero when I flip it up, I don't want to deck off all the stock. I just want to, and it'll make a prettier pattern to define this as a pocket over here. So let's do this. Let's do two axes. I'm sorry we're not getting to the 3D yet, but you can speed ahead. Pocketing. Like always, it wants a geometry. And for the geometry, select edges, that same perimeter, right? We want to go all the way out. You'll see what why this has to be. Select tangency. It did all the way around. Life is really good. You say, OK. Tool, the fantastic thing, unlike SolidCam, it keeps the same tool you had in last, right? You're not constantly reselecting the tool that you just used the previous operation. Spindle stuff, we don't worry. Clearance plane won't get us into trouble yet. Now everything switches, right? As you go between these two, it switches both rows. Advanced cut, I don't think that cares. Pocket entry exit, that doesn't matter. Cut levels. Pick the top. I think we better do this just in case. And zero is the depth. Let's generate and see what happens. Oh no, let's look at cut parameters because there's always some. Oh yeah. See, this wouldn't cut to the edge of that perimeter. It would leave a tiny little ridge on the top of this part that would eventually, the ball mill that we're going to do these fillets with, it would eventually get it. But the secret I've learned is you can't go too much, but one 0.25 and you make a minus. If you make this number too big, it, it, it algorithm failure. But you can make it a little bit bigger. So now it's going to overcut for this edge that we've decided. I only want to climb, blah, 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 step overs, none. And notice there's a adaptive tool path here, high speed. So that's really cool. It's not as comprehensive as eye machining for solid cam. But the other thing, is it the right height? No, it's, it's, it's at zero. Hang on. While we're here, we'll do face outer, outer, enter. It's not, it's not complaining yet. Probably the Microsoft problem, you can never get the pattern of double clicks. Where is it? Cut levels. Okay, this is going to pick the top. So we're going to pick the top the same as the bottom. Pick top is not at zero. It's at, I think, what, minus, minus 0 0.05? Is that how to say it? Up above? Isn't that nice? They, got, they do so good for help. In the cut depth, pick. See, it, it forces me to pick the start, and that's what's going to screw this up. Pick end. Well, let's try it again. Generate. Did it move down? No. See, I didn't have this problem the first time around. And let's see. This is cut levels. At least you know where to go. Geometry is at the bottom. Geometry is at the top. Geometry, pick top. Let's go here. Total cut depth. Generate. It didn't change anything. I'm sorry to be messing around with this. Oh, I get so exasperated with these pro all of these programs. There's nothing special about this one. From the top of the stock. How do I define the top of the stock as the top of the cut geometry? Well, you can't. Sorry. Pick the top. Let's, we want to go here. Rough, rough depth. Okay, generate. All right, it's in the part. And this is pathetic, right? That you got to calculate. Well, I know the stock's 50 thousandths up, I think, because I think I selected it. So now, 05. Oh, Oops, that was a mistake. Okay, 05. Oh, Generate. See, it's still wrong. Oh, my God. I'm going to spend an hour and a half just doing this. I'm not going to do the inside. I've gotten so disgusted. Every time I use a program, it's misery. Minus 50, it seems to know. Let's, let's, let's do this again. 
See, somehow I, I happen to stab things correctly. Generate. Okay. Now it's right. Sorry for that little... I leave all this in, right? I'm not a salesman with a demo program. Rehearsed four years. Face outer. Now what do we want to do? Okay. This is another thing that essentially makes the program, to me, very... Not unusable. None of this. You can always work around stuff, right? In all these programs. But... The secret here is we now we want to do a 3D. Okay, we're into the 3D. 20 minutes in, we're finally doing 3D. If I define these corners and then this big surface, it'll actually try to carve these, these pockets, right? It'll run a mill down these holes. Most of them will do this. So here's the secret. You go into SolidWorks and you just move the roll bar back so those don't exist anymore. Fantastic, right? But what's, what, what visual mill, visual cam, whatever you want to call it, it's going to do it's going to invalidate and put asterisks and it lose. It doesn't just put an asterisk. Hey, something happened. It poofs the geometry that you picked. The geometry is gone. You can't just regenerate. So that's pretty unacceptable in my book. So let's do it. Go back here, roll up to there. Poof. Now we can select these surfaces for the first 3d. We're finally getting around to notice and you say, Oh, okay, well, let's just regenerate that. No matching geometry found. Geometry doesn't exist. You can go reselect that geometry and it kind of remembers the rest of the operations and kind of will do it right. Although that's probably what hopped this up a little bit for me. I don't know. Uh, but then when you go back the other way, you're always going to have some of these tool paths lit up, right? So I'm going to leave these forgotten, unloved, and go our first three axis. Let me think. I think we did parallel finishing for the outside. Let's see. And I can show you a lot of grief here. The grief was, see the word surface? Well, that's what I've been using. That's what you use in all the 2D stuff. You don't notice up here. Oh, there's a new tab. So I had infinite problems until I realized, no, no, that tab. Let's have another place to select the same thing, but hide it. The other problem, it would only send the tool halfway down because when the center of that tool got to the edge of this surface down here, it gave, okay, that's it. I'm, I'm far as I can go. You fix that by clicking past. And this tells me that that Dave Ruiz part that I did, the episode one, two, three, four, where I thought I had to draw little patches. I think this was the mistake I made. I selected the surfaces, you know, in, in, ah, in down here surface boundary which just uses the surface and then you'll see what what would light up here are all edge 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 duh okay operator error remembered this select the surface and now just start going one two oh come on unselect god i love solidworks and the fact that you can poof over and you'll pave over these holes, this is why you don't want a standalone cam package like Mastercam standalone or Visual Mill standalone or on CNC or any of these, you know, Edge Cam, any of these standalones. It should either run like NX, you know, CamCAD, same package, or uh, Fusion, CAD Cam, same package, Inventor. Solid Cam has packages both for Inventor and SolidWorks. So I think we're done. Say yes. Tool. Now I know I want to go to a ball mill, but a long one, this one, but I want to edit it because I've learned this is going to bomb out. I need a lot more flute length. I need like an inch that much and say, save edit to tool. I think that's the right, I don't know what I'm doing. So, oh, notice, notice here, those operations show up. I think Bobcat has the same kind of thing or no, uh, SolidWorks cam by CamWorks. But of course, I hate that one because there's, well, there's a feature tree and there's an operation tree and what belongs and oh my God, so confusing. All right, here we go. So now I think I've got it. Does it show the length? You know, and of course, you can't stretch nothing out. Nobody's equipped for people. They must give programmers 1080. Or they, must, they must give them 480 screens to work on. They must work on, on, on their phones in, in a car while they drive, you know, because once you set for a higher screen resolution, you know, higher dot per inch or whatever, so that you can read stuff on a high resolution monitor. All these, all kinds of programs have trouble blowing up where stuff doesn't fit. 
like here. Oh, you, okay, I get take that back. You can at least do that. You won't know what you're looking at, but you're not going to be able to increase the size of the dialog box. But see, now I kind of understand. We are in this tool tab, and if this is, it makes me happy, even though it's totally incomplete and it's hard to see what's going on. Oh, it does show feeds and speeds. And you can go here, here, clearance plane. That may or may not matter. Sorting. This is what I've learned. Kind of like force myself to do what Bobcat forces you to do when you go next, next, next. Advanced cut parameters. Let's see. Arc fitting. We might want this. And let's make it to a tenth. This is probably why I crashed this program. Entry exit. I don't think we have to worry. Z containment. We may have to worry about this. Cut parameters. You want to go more accurate? This is probably what's causing my crashes. Okay. I want only conventional mill. A start side. I'd rather start at the top. I'm not sure what that means. See, I'm changing things from when I practiced. What's this? Only the top of the part, top and sides, but I don't want to machine the sides. I must have selected a different. Okay, let's do generate and see what happens. Okay, so the angle is wrong. This is parallel finish, but with the wrong angle. Let's see. Cut parameter. It should be an angle somewhere. Angle of cuts. 90. Generate. This is not what I wanted. Because this, see, I'm showing you all the grief. You get to see it because I'm too disgusted right now to not suppress. Oh, jeez. Not simulate. There's no delete. I think the delete button works. You can say cut. Okay, here we go again. What did I do? Oh, is it horizontal roughing that I did? I can't believe that. I must have selected... 3D offset profiling. Let's try this one. This is, <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, part surfaces. Notice that it's slightly different, I think. Uh, go past, select the surfaces. Unlike solid cam, it doesn't remember any, you know, your previous selections and just let you pick them from a drop down list. You get to do it over. Over and over and over. If it crashed, should we do an hour show? So we could show the inside or what? Okay. And say yes. And the tool. Where is that 275 two flute ball mill? See, I changed that and edited it, but it doesn't seem to stick. So. Since we're going to, I know we're going to use it later if we ever get it. Oh, no. It did have the right length. Okay. Okay. 275. It's a ball mill. Speeds and feeds. Tool geometry. It's <laughs> not too much of it. Not the length of the tool. That's secret. All right. You can see I'm getting a little impatient. Feeds and speeds. Cut parameters. Make it a little, well, I'm not even going to make it more accurate. I just want to, z yeah, this sound. Don't cut both sides. That'll do the inside. It's actually that stupid. Cutting bandwidth. This, oh, this is this goofy distance. And I want to go 20 thousandths. O2. Entry exits. Linear. Let's just generate and see if we can get this thing to work. And it's not doing anything even the slightest bit rational including cutting this stuff so like i say i leave all this in what did i do the first see i can't save so think about that uh, visual cam people because you can't save it people on youtube can't show people the right way to do it and it's so complicated they've forgotten yes i am getting very frustrated right now okay Part surfaces on. Let's at least see if we can get back to where we were. Why it's doing this goofy stuff out here. Doesn't matter. Okay. 
this definitely isn't going to be, I'm not going to do the inside. I'm too disgusted right now. I just, it's, it's ugly. Cut. What did I do? I guess I could, no, I can't go back. I could go look at the video. Horizontal finishing. That's what it was. Oh, dear gosh. Horizontal finishing. Part surfaces. Go past. Select the surfaces, right? It's forgotten what we did three seconds ago. And the more messing around, the more ins and outs we do, the more whatever memory leak crashes this thing is building up. That's another reason I don't think I'll do the inside. Horizontal finishing. Okay. And so it says pass. The tool. I'm sure it's forgotten. No, no. What happened? Tool. 375? No, I want 275. Ball mill. Two flute. And see, this is the one. It, I didn't edit this business. One learning every as we use it. Okay, and I think save edits to tool. Uh, you know what are you doing with this thing? I don't. So many buttons. So many buttons. Feeds and speeds. We don't care. Clearance plane. Now here's a good opportunity to go up here. Perform arc fitting. Let's make it accurate just for grin. Just so we can crash the program sooner. No entry or exit. Optimized machining. That was a big deal. No entry exit. So it comes down on the part. I don't think we had to do that. This was important, okay? Otherwise, uh, uh, over here with control geometry, if you didn't select this, it would only go down halfway. Then if you did select, you know, let's see. Once I got it past that, then the next headache is here. By not telling it the bottom of the part was actually below the part. So let's, let's show you. Easier to show you. Let's see, you do top, you select the top, you go here, so it knows 50,000 is down. Bottom, you select the bottom, you go here, you select something on the bottom. Minus 135, but you want to go 125 more, right? You want to go half of the diameter of a quarter inch ball mill down further. So the corner of that ball mill gets to the bottom edge of this part. I know you'll see when we do it what I'm talking about. 125 plus 35 is 1475, 1475. Okay, we don't want to clear flats, and I think we're ready. Oh, step down control, distance. Here we want to go our 20 thousandths, oh, two. Generate. It's a lot of thinking. Finally, we did it. And notice how, the, because I did that depth, that negative depth, by going, otherwise, when it stops, you can see if the tip of the tool, the center tip of a ball mill, stops at this level, at the level of the bottom of the part, it doesn't get to the bottom of the part, right? It doesn't get to that, that edge there. It leaves a big fat scallop on the bottom. That's why when we did the stock, we biased the stock one way, okay? So horizontal finishing. So that's it. Let's see. Oh, I can't save. Please don't crash. What are we going to do? Simulate, play. See, now it's lost. It loses visibility. Another bug. Or no, did I turn off stock? Yeah, there we go. Uh, something, something's wrong still. Let's do setup, play. Now it's smarter. Go really, really fast. Zing. See how we overshot it, and now we're going here. And now we're going to stop this and say to the end. You can see it thinking down here. It does all that pretty quick. It doesn't have to do any animations. Bam. And here's where you can see. See how it's over-traveled? How do you turn off tool pass here? It's over-traveled down, but it hasn't broken the part out, right? It probably could have a little extra stock here. I'm not sure. There's not a lot of stock. You know, there's like 50 thousandths holding this part in. But 50 thousandths over this whole thing, maybe it'll be strong enough to hold the part when we flip it over. Let's do that. I'm going to try to go real quick just to give you the overview. Back to program. What did we turn off before? Toolpaths? 
And what did we turn off here? Stock we don't want to see. So we'll turn on the tool paths because they're only for a little while. Outer setup, new setup. Gives you the machine thing. And now I got to remember, where's the big flat thing? Okay, so it was like this. Now it's going to be in the vise like this. Come on. So it's right around X. X is pointing in the right direction. So flip around X. One, two. So say generate. So now that's correct. The setup is right. Now the, what I love about this, you'd say work zero. You set the stock box and you set it to that exact same point. Come on. Set the stock box lowest. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry, I shouldn't do it that way. The thinking being is if you want this part to be the right thickness, you, you can only reference the identical point on the stock. You can't go to the top of the stock because tiny variations in that will be changing the thickness of the part. This way, you get away with it. Otherwise, it's like my friend did where he sets his part zero to the center top of the stock and then uses a $20,000 Renishaw probe in his Haas to, to measure the stock and there's a macro in the Renishaw software that says, okay, now find the center of that. I prefer doing it like this because I can find these edges. I can find the parallel that's holding or the, the deck of the vise that's holding this up. So say generate, that's right. And this here's what I like, watch. That works zero, that works zero, same. Now, what we want to do, oh, see, now watch, this is going to go bad because we got to go back here and uh, do the rest of the part. Bam, go back here. See, now all three of them have asterisks and they've lost their geometry. So, you know, how do you, you because of that, because you can't have the geometry showing to do this one, to, to ignore these pockets, these counter, counter sinks, counter bores, all right, fine. So what do we want to do? Uh, this one I kind of remembered. This is a 3D show, so I'm going to go long. It might be an hour, but uh, horizontal roughing. That's what we want to do. Here comes the hor. See, it's taking a little bit longer. Now, what did I do? Tart surfaces. I think I just tediously surface extent. Did I say past again? Can't remember. Okay, and I think I just selected everything. And please feel free, real visual cam people. Oh, no, 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 you're doing that all wrong. Okay, here, 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 here. SolidWorks is just so good at so many things. I was using a 2005 bootleg for the longest time. Finally said, well, if I'm going to be making YouTube videos about SolidWorks, I should really pay for it, which I did. This all almost all of the CAM programs use module works to generate their 3D tool paths. The one exception might be I machining 3D by uh, solid cam because they patented that and had it years ago. But both Bobcad and Mastercam, and I'm sure I think we'll do the bottom too. We'll select them all. Okay. Say so there the tool. We're going to go back and use that big one. Hopefully it's deep enough. We'll figure that out. Feeds and speeds. These are straight walls. Feeds and speeds. Clearance planes. Advanced cut parameter, not going to, well, should we add a couple zeros? Sure. Engage, retract. I think it's smart enough. Cut parameters here. Should we do something fun? High speed, adaptive tool paths. Climb, do a cleanup pass. That turns out to be important. Step over quarter, 25% of the mill. It did need help with level. Oh, don't leave any stock. Every bit's roughing. Let's leave stock everywhere. Now, this is the inside of an oil reservoir. We don't need stock. Cut levels. I think it needed help here. So select the, oh, come on. Select this top cut level. That took it. Select this bottom cut level. And the bottom is down here. 
So I think that helps it, right? And all this is building constraints that that visual cam, visual mill, is sending to the module works module, probably. That's my guess. I think I think that's it. Let's try generate. It's got to think a lot. This is pretty complicated. Look at that. Sweet. And you see everything's circular. I like this better. iMachining, I did this in iMachining. It was an 8 megabyte file. The part file became 8 megabytes. You can imagine how many, the G code must be equally big. This doesn't seem to do as many tool paths. And you could lessen the step overs and step downs. So that's pretty impressive. And if I remember right, it actually knows to get these. I'm not sure. Maybe not. We'll see. Let's do a simulate play. Oh, it's taken an initial big step over. But, you know, iMachining might have been the only game in town 10, 12 years ago or whenever. But Bobcad, they all seem to support. I'm, I'm curious. My next package that I'm going to look at is HSM Works, the plugin. And I'm not a big fan of Autodesk because I owned AutoCAD 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And I just don't like the way that company did business. You'll see it like here. It'll do a cleanup pass. It'll seem, it, it seems to go fix that. Well, my patience level has been exceeded. Stop to end. So down here, you can see its progress. Bang. And then hide the tool paths. And it kind of did what you'd expect, although it leaves a little ledge here. I haven't figured that out. That's another mystery. But I think when we do our compare, yeah, see, it did the floor. Perfect. This is this particular part. I don't want to harp too much on that. So I'm calling that a win. Horizontal roughing, you know, it, it, it got this stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty close, right, for the inside of the part. And what do we want to do next? We want to get back into the program. And now we want to say three axis horizontal finishing, I think. Here it is. I guess parallel, that was my mistake, right? I didn't parallel finishing. Horizontal finishing. Go here. Don't click surface here like I've been doing and confusing myself. I think I'm pretty sure you got to do this past business. Select the surfaces you want, which is going to be here. Right? We want to take that step that was at the bottom, which, you know, some people, oh, it's a prototype. Leave the step in. Nobody will see it. It's on the inside of the part. Make your parts to print, especially prototype parts. Right? That's the most important part to be accurate. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a prototype. In my short life, I can tell you how many disasters that attitude, always management, in a hurry. Oh, don't worry about it. Just don't do this finish machine. Okay, so we go there. That made it happy. Now I'm trying to fall back. Tool, we want that ball mill. Hopefully it's smart enough. Feeds and speeds, clearance plane, advanced cut. Let's do make it accurate. Add another zero. Entry exit. No entry exit. You probably could afford it here. What's this? Optimize, don't worry. Cut levels. This is where I had to help it and say, your top is right here. Wait a minute. Pick top. See, that's... Uh, come on. Light something up. I can... Uh, there. So it took it. Yes. Enable bottom. Select pick bottom. Why do they do this to their fellow man? Okay. Point to a... Don't say clear flats. Enough life. Okay. Oh, control, cut parameters. This is it. Okay. We can see if we can make it a little more accurate. I think this is just causing it to crash. I just want to climb. And then there was a... There was a clearance plane problem here at one time. We'll see if it gets it generate. Did I turn off tool paths? I think I did. We'll have to turn them back on. It's kind of nice, you know, the tabs. It's overall, you can see it started, and then they got into these multiple tabs in the dialog boxes. And that's where the beauty and cleanliness and intuitiveness that got me so excited.
to, to get into this program, right? But, and where's toolpaths? This him? Okay, so we didn't have enough step down. But it looks like it's doing, if there's a toolpath right there, yeah, we know the document's not saved. We're already at half an hour. This is rough inner. This is finish inner. Bang. Okay, so double click and all we got to do, I think it's depth control, right? All the programs are a little different. Oh, it's not depth. Cut levels. Distance. O to and you're not going to see it. I got to pull it up a little so you can see. Generate. Should think a little more because it's got quite a few more tool paths than doing 0.125. It's doing 0.02. Yeah, I'm going to just stick with this. It's more instructive. I'm sorry I had all. I might cut that 2D stuff out that I had trouble with. It's a lot more things than. If it crashes now, I'm going to kill myself. All right. I, I hope that's a toolpath here. Right? It's going to get coarser as it goes to the flat, right? That's where the inaccuracies. Let us go simulate. Let us say play. This is kind of cool. And I think compare works. Does it? Cancel. Okay, it's going back. Notice I got the speed pegged and it's still taken like forever. I can turn off the tool pass down here. I'm getting so afraid of this thing crashing before I show you. See, not too bad, but it does have. Yeah, see, it got a little coarse here. So it's going to have this little ridge that's not. So I get, you know, you could use a much finer yet step down or Try a pencil mill. You know, there's things you can... The design intent of this was quarter-inch radius is it was to take a half-inch tool and just, you know, do the whole thing with a half-inch ball mill, go around the perimeter, and then just do the flat separate. My little mill will not take a half-inch tool hogging through aluminum. So what's next? Oh, let's cut the part out. I think we're close enough to show you. Now uh, we'll just finish this part. What is it? A profile... Come on, think. Now we're back to our comfort zone. Come here. Light something up, folks. Oh, God, why? Select face for face boundary. I must have done, yeah, see surface boundary. Here, okay. The filter, they turn the filters on, okay. Can't see, oh, I can't see it myself. It's below my screen. Got a camera sitting in front. Select tangency. Goes all, see the blue? All the way around the part. Done. Tool. We want the big tool now. Now I like this thing. Feeds and speeds. Don't worry. Clearance planes. Don't worry. Cut parameters. Tolerance. None of this matters. Climb. Please always climb. Cut width. I think I did point four. And step over, I did point, I don't know, one, two, five. Because we got to cut, you know, like, like this area. We're not just running. When, when we get here, it's going to leave meat here if we don't do it this way. Cut levels. Location of the cut geometry is at the bottom. Let's see if this thing's smart enough. Say generate. Did we turn off tool pass? We sure did. And there it is. But you'll notice it's going to this edge. There's half the distance of the tool. That could leave an incredibly sharp edge. We really haven't cut the part out until we go all the way past this edge. And then that was the same trick. I'll double click on this. Yeah, it's slowing down. That was cut. Oh, see, w where is it? Okay, cut parameters is over here. Take stock and, and make it minus point you know one i think if it's too big a number it seems to choke say generate ah see how it moved out now it's going to cut free so if we do simulate sorry 50 minutes of fun so now it's going around let's see if it leaves any islands i don't think it will there see it's broken through 
And like I say, I'm not claiming this is a good part designed or a good part to make. Cutting it out like this, what I learned, one of the, I forget, maybe the Bobcad, I did deck the stock up here, which then is going to cause part zero and how do you figure all that out? Because my thinking is, as, as, you, as you're cutting this perimeter and just getting ready for this part to drop, if it would drop flat, it wouldn't be a problem. But it's going to, one corner will drop first, the 50,000s here, and it might put a little scuff. And this is a gasket surface for this, this part. So, you know, that's all coulda, woulda, shoulda. I just wanted to show the 3D capabilities. And let's do compare. Not bad. Let's turn off the tool pass down here. Oh, it's taking forever. Oh, no, it's still in compare mode. I guess it won't let me turn off the tool pass. Turn off the tool pass. Go back to compare mode. This will be our. And just like you'd expect, I've set it to 10th. You know, you can compare a little, a little coarser, apply. Makes it look a little better. But see, all this green's good. The green on the gasket surface, although it might not be real if that part tilts a little as you cut it out. That's I'll leave that for the real machinists. There's a little extra stock on this cutout. There's a little extra stock on this cutout, but it tried. That's a clearance for a, a bolt uh, head that's on the side of the motor. And then it left this little fillet down here. But that's all, you know, 3D experts. That, that's I'm sure I can figure that out. The biggest problem I have is it crashes when you get a lot of stuff working. And then how to fix this, you know, I, I guess here, let's try real quick. Geometry, double click on the control geometry. Uh, I got to show you what I'm doing. Edge region, this edge, right click, select tangency, say OK. Say generate. OK, so we fixed perimeter. And this one, face outer. I think it was that same exact one, wasn't it? Double click control geometry. It shows up. See, it's completely forgotten. All of that stuff that was there. Select edges. And say, select tangency. Goes all the way around. Say OK. Say generate. Does its thing. Now, whether the, the part's correct, you know, whether it screwed something up, seemed to get that right. Uh, perimeter went all the way down like it's OK. So but what you can't do now is you can't fix this one, right? To fix this one, you, 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 as soon as you go back, well, we'll do it on the way out, right? So you're like, oh, OK, God, we almost got them all. Watch. And, and this is why I think this is a big problem. Go back into SolidWorks, say, OK, now I want to select just that, but leave the counter bores off. So I do my roll back to outside fillet, just under outside fillet there, let it go. Bam, OK, now I can select my surfaces, go here. All of them are lit up again, right? So at the very best, you're going to do, just before I did this, you're going to have this horizontal finishing. Oh, I should, I should say this. Uh, what is this? Um, outer sides. Oh, in the same, let, let's be a gasket, right? So this is a big deal, right? With Bobcat, it says, hey, you've changed something. You know, should I regenerate? You say no, and that's it. It doesn't throw little asterisks and say problems. So, okay, 53 minutes. Sorry, at least you got to see me do it real time. Sorry for all that 2D suffering. Sorry for wrong tool things, but I leave my mistakes in. So I think it's better to show how confusing all this can be. All right. For a first time user, non-machinist. I will catch you folks next time. We're going to get into HSM works, I think. I've got it downloaded. We're going to give it a try. See you in a bit.